Greetings Rainforest Cafe visitors. Today on Mary Mary Meeples we are looking at Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comet. I am not going to flip this over as I normally do for there is stuff in here I wish not to flip upon its head. So we'll get this open, show you the stuff inside, I'll show you the bottom of the box here later. So we start off with our rule book. It is a big rule book because it covers quite a bit of things and make sure that it's covered well. We have all of our components, the assembly instructions for the waterfall of life, the token vaults, and the discard pile boats. Here's a big picture of the game setup, example of a two player setup. Here is all the setup. Then we get into the overview of the game, building the jungle, the bag, the game structure, what an action phase um, pertains, contains five rules regarding actions, and then we get into the eight different types of actions you can take. And here they all are. And then we're into the cleanup phase. How the game ends, how to calculate your score. Here is the scoring criteria for base animals. They have the different types, so there's a grouping, and they go into examples and explain that and the community. Here's some score calculation examples. Variant modes, a lightning mode, to play it uh, quicker. And here's the gameplay changes. The solo mode, what the goal is, game setup changes, gameplay changes, how the game ends. And then it's got nine scenarios that go up in difficulty. And you try and win the medal based on the criteria. And here's the appendix for the different base animal cards that needs more explanation. Here's even more. Here is the unique animal cards. The scenery cards with numbers so you can easily find them. The rest of the scenery and the insect cards. Here is that waterfall of life. This becomes 3D. I'll be putting this together and showing you that in a bit. We have a score pad. As you can see, I have won both games, but you're scoring for the different animals, the scenery cards, where you're going up on the different tracks of the waterfall. Any seeds are worth a point, and then whoever triggers the end of the game gets five points. You have four different player colors. You have blue, yellow, white, and green. In these bags, I have put the starting chips so we do have the um, upgraded wooden components, otherwise they are little cardboard pieces. So here's what your starting bag contains. And then you get four player markers in your color that go on the waterfall. Next up we have more upgraded wooden bits. We have the water flowers, we have the trees, we have seeds, we have the animal complete. When you use all the meeples on an animal, you put this on there to signify it's done. Once five are empty, the end of the game's trigger. And then we have these discs, which I'll get to in one second after I show you this. This is that five point wood chip that a person can take when they trigger the end of the game. These are the solo play chips that you'll be pulling. You'll remove an animal from one of the cards and you'll flip it over and that will tell you the other thing that happens. If you do a renew, if you get rid of certain cards, and then what track their player piece goes up on. So that's all those wood bits. Then we have, we're going to slide that here. We have the animals. So you have eight base animals. You have a woodpecker, a caiman, a jaguar, a giant otter, a leaf frog, a tamarind, a toucan, and a macaw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. 
So those are your base animals you play with every game. And I'm going to grab as many as I can, but these are the unique animals. Each player gets their own. And you only have one of most of them, except for the piranha. The piranha, there's two of them. But there's a large variety of these unique animals. As you can see, I know I'm missing a couple because I haven't grabbed the piranha yet. He's in here somewhere. There's a snake, another bird, armadillo. There's a piranha. Piranha. So as I said, these are all unique animals that makes it asymmetric. There's an iguana, howler monkey, and the capybara. So that is a lot of unique animals. Let's get those shoved off. Let's not combine those. Let's push these that way. So speaking of those animals, here are their cards. So you have the unique animals have this on the back. Anteater, fruit bat, taper. There we go. Piranhas. A sloth, manatee, howler monkey, iguana, poison dart frog, anaconda, capybara, Amazon river dolphin, armadillo, hoatzin, and river turtle. So in addition to those, as I said, you have the eight base animals. And each base animal, if you look down here, has a letter grouping. And then this is how many you have per player. And you have A's. B, C, D, E, and F, but E is for you to make your own, and F is an easier family type. I'll just show you the A sides here. So you see they have a scoring condition. This is where they have to go, and this is how much you have to pay to get them into your jungle. Leaf frog, giant otter, macaw, toucan, Sam woodpecker and if you notice the arts all different on these and then actually one of the cool things is let me get to the F's here in a minute there we go so as I said the F is considered the family variant and if you look they each have a little offspring with them their little family thought that was a nice little thematic touch that they did here and like I said this is easier scoring than the other ones and then you can make your own so that is all the different types of animals on these cards. You then have this pack, which has the player aids in it. And then this is the rules for the Kickstarter exclusive pack, which is the Harpy Eagle. The Black Jaguar, the Wooden Endgame, and one unique, which is the Harpy Eagle, which is right here. This is the solo card, so when you play, based on the scenario, it'll tell you to put one of these sides up. And you're going to move a marker here every round. When you reach the Comet symbol, you're going to pull one of those discs I showed you. When you get to the different bonuses, which doesn't look like side B has, so let's go to side A. When you get to one of these bonuses, you'll do that action. After 20 rounds, game is over. And this mini expansion is some of those unique animals. Have, uh, where is one of them? There we go. The capybara has this E. Those are expansion animals that you got. So that explains their scoring conditions. You have your starting tiles. Each person is going to get one of these at random. They show three different terrains and some and placement bonuses. Same thing with these. These are the tiles you'll be grabbing throughout the game. They have the different terrain tiles, different placement bonuses. Oh, that's a cool one. I don't think we've seen it. Where'd that one go? Well, maybe it was that one I just thought was an island. And there's that. What else do we got in here? So these are, let's kick those off. These are the legs for the waterfall. As I said, I'll construct that here in a minute. 
These are bonus tiles you can get. They're double sided with the different terrain types. We have a bunch of cards here I'll lay out. You have scenery cards and insect cards. These are instant effects. These are end of game. Here's your discard boats with their player colors along the trim. Let's get those moved out of here. So I can show you the token vaults. So this shows what it is, two, three, four spending. That's leafs and then how much they cost. These lids just slide off and inside you'll see all the various discs that you'll grab when you buy them. And the lid just slides on usually easily. We'll see if I can do it. There we go. Not a problem. And then this one has the water and the fruit. And as you see, that one comes off just like so. And then slide it back on. Just like that. That way they don't fall around as you're moving your box. And then speaking of the box, here is the bottom of the box as I promised. You see the waterfall set up, the token vaults, the boats. So these are the trees that actually come in the normal box. They're just a punch board and you just put them together. We have the wooden ones. And then there's the regular disc. So as you can see, the main game does come with all of the wooden meeples and the 3D stuff. The main thing that's different is the wooden leaves and trees and then the wooden discs. And our Kickstarter edition just came with that pack that had the uh, exclusive items. All right, well, let me get these cards laid out. Let me get that waterfall set up and we'll be right back with that. All right, here is that waterfall all set up. You'll see there's tracks. This is the terrain tile track. You'll pay this cost and move around, or move down it to grab a terrain tile. These are bonuses that anyone gets. This is a first time bonus. This is the grab trees. This is the grab water flowers. This is increase your storage limit. These are the bonus actions you can take. Here we have our insect cards getting close to some of these. So this is the cost to buy it from the row and it plays immediately. So this would be three water. There's its name and its action. They do have some dupe or they are duplicates in here of the bugs. So if you don't get the first one, maybe you'll get the second one. As you can see right there, there's two of the same. And up there. So these are instant action cards. And then we go over here to the scenery. So again, you pay this cost. The difference is these come in front of you and stay in front of you. You can have up to four in the game. And then these give you end of game scoring. So this is you're gonna get two points per leaf frog. This is different lives. This is looking for pairs. That's copying and scoring again for one of your animals. This is having so many flowers. So there is a Decent variety of different scoring conditions beyond just the normal. So that is everything that was inside Life of the Amazonia along with almost everything from the Kickstarter. The only thing we didn't get was the sleeves and the wooden waterfall of life. All right, everyone have a good day and save that rainforest.